<laughs> Tell me about Janet and, and, and Jimmy Stewart on The Naked Spur. On The Naked Spur. Very friendly, very warm. And uh, again, it shows how the, the studios were that time. In the scene, it's a story of lust. Three men lusting for her. And uh, we got a call from the studio. Button up, don't show any bosom. Now, there's a girl with bosom, you know. And I called back to the I said, you can't do this. You got to show a little. No, you can't. If you do, we are coming home. So we did sneak a little in. <laughs> there she is lying on the ground with, you know, the, these, the bad guys and the good guys in the back. The real typical uh, big action adventure, cowboys and Indian type of picture. And everybody was good at it. Unfortunately, today there's only two people left alive from that, Janet and uh, John, um, and Janet and Janet and Jimmy. Yeah, Jimmy. She said an interesting thing that that there was a, a scene there where the light was changing or something was happening with the weather, and Jimmy Stewart was uh, he didn't have any more to do. Yeah. So uh, she was, you know, they said, "Well, fine, we'll just do this for camera, Jimmy. You can go." And he said, "No, no." I'll I'll stick around and I'll I'll feed the lines to yeah, her. That's that's the kind of guy. I and she was she. If you remember that, I'd like you to describe it because she said to me that 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 today nobody would even do that. Yeah. Like they would say, oh no, I you know I'm at the star, I'm leaving. Yeah, you yeah. don't need me. I'm not going to hang around here. Right. Well, Jimmy was that kind of guy, and I think in those days every actor was that kind of person. They they played off stage. They always did. And that's the way it should be because you can't. What are you going to play against a wall? You're going to play. You just look at nothing. Have a black drop there and talk to the drop, you know. But uh, nowadays it's a lot different. Why do you suppose it's different? Anything, everything I think is different because of money, because of greed, because of uh, training, bringing brought it brought up by terribly. We're brought up wrong, how to deal with people, how to have feelings and all that. It's only money and it's, you know, all of us in those days at MGM, I never even knew what I got paid. I never, I never, nobody did. They just, the checks went to their wife, sister, or to their agent or something. Because we all were so glad to be making films, being part of it, you know. And now when you see what's going on, you just, ah. It's so, it's terrible because it, it's, it's a great industry and it's great to be able to be in it. And, but with all those dollars, it, it, well, I'm not ready this time. I'll, tomorrow I'll feel better for 25000 a day, you know. Crazy. Well, you know, Janet said that when she got offered the, the $50 a week, she just signed all the contracts. She didn't ask for an agent. She didn't ask. She just signed. No. She was yeah. just so thrilled. Yeah. Do you know that on Romance of Rosie Ridge, Janet was paid $50 a week? Really? Do you know how much Van Johnson was making no idea. 7000 a week. 7000 That was pretty good in those days. 46 Yeah. Did you ever work on a movie with Van Johnson? No, I knew him. You know, everybody knew everybody because we were a family, but I never worked with him. What was he like? He was good. He was out, out you know, cute guy. He was, was he's smiling all the time. Just a pleasure to be around, you know. He's, it wasn't a typical movie star type of thing. He was just a good guy. Yeah, because Janet said he was the nicest of all of them. Yeah, he really was. Uh, she said, uh, uh, if anybody were to ask me who my favorite leading man was, it was Van. Yeah, he was yeah. just the most wonderful guy. Yeah. And he's a good actor. He, whatever he did was good. Tell me a little bit about uh, Strictly Dishonorable. Did you work on that? No, I didn't. Tell me about Act of Violence. You didn't work on that. Okay. I'm starting to think I didn't make any movies. Let's see. Uh, no, I'm just thinking of things. That, okay, go ahead. Well, Janet was talking about how in the old days when you when you did a stunt that you just did it, and she was talking about a movie where there was a big fight scene at the end on a cliff, and yeah. it was very close. You know, 300 feet. That down was the, the Vikings. Bottom. Oh, was yeah. that the Vikings? Vikings. Oh, I can't remember. Yeah, but. Uh, you know, in those days, though, the studios were very much against the actors uh, doing stunts, and a lot of them wanted to, but uh, and some got hurt. But today, the stunts are wilder than ever. You know, we, what we thought was wild then is nothing what it is today. Well, you know, she says that she used to go on these uh, locations, 
and nobody ever checked that like there was this castle in uh, wherever they were Denmark mm. yeah. and they were up 500 feet and there were no rails oh <laughs> god <laughs> well listen I know when I when I when I look through a camera you know directing a scene and I see a straight drop I guess I start to go oh, I'm gonna faint you know? it's funny how that does when you look or lose everything else and just your eyes into the ground it's uh, there was, there was a woman, uh, uh, there was a, I'm trying, I don't know whether, uh, maybe, do you remember when she did the film for Orson Welles, Touch mm -hmm. of Evil? No. Um, I know, I remember the picture, but I didn't know her. Didn't she I? did that whole, she did that whole movie with a broken shoulder. Wow. Because she was doing a show at MGM, it was a musical, I don't know which one it was, maybe My Sister Eileen, and it, for the for the, the things that the stunt people couldn't do, you know, where the, it was like yeah. a medium shot, yeah. the guy was like twirling her around, and he tripped over the cable and dropped her on her shoulder. Wow. Um, did that happen a lot in those days? No, I we were I you know, and all the times I worked there, we were very careful not to hurt get anybody hurt ever, you know. And with the the stunt men, in fact, last night I saw two of the stunt men from those days. They're pretty old now, but. They were the greatest, and we used them, you know, dumping cars, sliding on motorcycles. The, the, the great trick in, in, in action movies was you'd have a, have a shot of a, somebody riding on a hot thing, you know, you don't see him, and you don't see his face because there's a double, and he slides into some flowers, right? And across from behind the flowers, the star gets up. <laughs> You know, your action, you don't, and, and there he's from her, the same guy, and he had no danger, but the, the guys did, they wheeled and dealed, you know. Lana Turner, it was all I could do to hold myself together. <laughs> Ava Gardner, it just, it could just eat her up, she was so beautiful. And I think the best of all was, I mean, it's sticking in my head, and I love her. Isn't this awful? Sorry, wrong number. Um, Barbara Stanley. Barbara Stanley. So how to do it. C crazy about her. The best of all, and she just was a filmmaker. As, as an actress, she was a filmmaker. She was always there, always around, and always saying, can I help you? And be the f she was the first one there in the morning and the last one to go home at night. And I think her, uh, the years I was with her, I don't think she was very happy with her marriage. And she was blue a lot, you know, felt badly. You know. And we all tried to get her up. But I loved her. She was really something. Was that when she was with Robert Taylor? Uh, when I got there, she was just about breaking up with Robert Taylor. So that's who she was blue about, Robert yeah, Taylor? Yeah, she was. Um, tell me about Ava Gardner. <laughs> it's hard to, hard to, hard to, to not want to hug her and to touch her. Uh, it was, she was so something. I'll tell you how, how one great experience with her. We were on the set getting ready, and the camera's here, and the set's there, and we're talking. And she was a little late. And, it, and we were all looking around. She, I said to my sister, you got to find her. Just as I said that, the stage door opened. You didn't have to turn around. You knew she was coming in the set. And she walked, and I'm standing right by the camera. She walks up, puts her arms around me, and her bosom's in my back. She says, what time do you want me tomorrow? I said, any time you want. I've got to tell you, it took all I had to live through that. She's the most exotic, beautiful, sexy, all those things, and had a terrible life. All bad news, all bad men for her, all husbands were. And I saw, unfortunately, I saw her not too long before she died, and she had blown up. You know, Sidney Gilleroff, you know he, who he was or is? He had called me from Rome. She had done a picture in Rome on private money, not a feature. And uh, he asked me if I'd read it, look at it, and see if I could bring it to America. So I read I put it in our projection room at home, and I read the script, and then I looked at the screen. I mean, I looked at this on the screen. And her, she's introduced. She walks into the set. She's like this. And the whole story took place in the dining room. And I tell you, it was so terrible. It just was like somebody went out of their way to make her look oh, horrible. The story was horrible. And uh, the lights went up, and I called Sydney. I said, Sydney, forget it. Nobody will buy it, nobody will use it. And Jesus, don't show anybody how she looks. That's the last thing. Fortunately for you, you weren't around when, you, when she was with Frank, right? 
Yeah, you know, and I was was too past with Frank, but I was with Frank when we did uh, uh, a picture in Italy called you know, going crazy. He, uh, we we were there about oh, about four months. Kind of damn thing. Anyway, we were when we were one night. Frank calls me and said, she, she, uh, "She's coming into town, and she's going to put her jewels in the bank, in a place where it's safe." And then when she comes out, take her, get our, one of our drivers to take her out there to where we were living. And he said, I'm going to think I'm coming in town. I'm going to stay in the country. I'm going to stay in town tonight. So at the time came, so I, we finished shooting and uh, got her out to the thing. Everything was fine. I go to bed. The phone rings. It's about 4 o'clock in the morning. I say, Ava. She said, get me out of this goddamn place. I'm scared to death here all alone out here in the, in the middle of nowhere. So I got in a car with a driver and went out and got her put her in the hotel. <laughs> I said, how, we, how I work the next day, I don't know, but there I am with Ava, driving her <laughs> What was the name of the movie you were working on with her where you said she was late? That uh, was, uh, Angel, that was uh, East Side, West Side. Mervyn Leroy was the director. Amazing. Yeah. She was stunningly uh. And, and the other, I can't, I can't tell you how she was, you know. She just, I, I, there's not enough words I could use about her, her, her sexuality and all that. But they didn't, you know, they, they made real bad choices with men, even Lana Turner. Oh. Well, you know, uh, June Allison married Dick Powell, and he divorced Joan Blondell, mm -hmm. another big MGM star. June Allison. Reformer and the Redhead. Jesus Christ. Thank you, God. Who would ever remember that yeah. one? Yeah, Reformer and the Redhead. It was a nice little movie, yeah. But it was MGM. Yeah. Was that one of June Allison's first movies? No, she'd had pictures before that. She's She was there a long time. She did a lot of pictures. She danced numbers and everything. She did musicals. Sweet, real sweet lady. Is she Was she in those days... Um, you know, she portrayed this character, but so many people have told me that she was so opposite from that little sweet little girl with the Peter Pan collar. Well, when you turn the, the music, when you turn scene on, she was at whatever she wanted to be. You know, she was a very good actress. She, and uh, I just, it wasn't a goody goody thing, but she wasn't a bad thing. She just was, her character, she played the hell out of him, you know. But in her private life, she was a very smart businesswoman, right? Yeah, right. Because so she, was he. But he died pretty yeah, early, didn't he? Yeah, he was a good guy, too. 